Great, so we've now got our chat working in terms of the messages being pulled through every five seconds. What we now need to do is actually go ahead and create the functionality to be able to enter a message based on the user that is logged in. Remember we have this forged uh, login system where we define the user in the URL. Uh, we'll be creating a new um, or bringing up a new browser and uh, we'll be setting this value different and we'll see how that works. So uh, let's go ahead and open up our code. We need to make some uh, changes to our JavaScript file and obviously we need to make some changes to our chat.php file because if the method is throw and we need to add something else in here to say if the message is defined, then throw the message into the database and we do that using our throw method uh, method basically. Uh, throw message method, sorry. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to create a, uh, a variable inside of my chat object, and this is going to be the selector for our entry uh, text area. What I'm going to now do is bind a an event handler to when the key is pressed down. But remember, we have this additional functionality where we use shift and return for a new line. Now, this basically came about because it just is really annoying to have another button somewhere to submit a message. It's a lot more natural if you can type a message, hit enter, and it you know submits. But then you also have the uh, ability to do a line down if you need. And this is going to be by pressing control because remember enter is going to submit data. So we can't use enter to go down a line. So uh, what do we do here? Well, uh, inside of chat.js, we need to go ahead and bind an event handler. So I'm going to say chat.entry, which we've just created a line above. We're going to bind a uh, key down event handler. And in here, we're going to use an anonymous function with an uh, event uh, callback or an event argument. And uh, we're going to use this to detect the key code and whether the shift key has been pressed. So we can use this, uh, we can do this really, really easily with uh, jQuery. So we have an if statement here. So if e dot key code, not g code, key code is equal to 13 and e dot shift key is equal to false, then we want to go ahead and throw message. And then we also want to prevent the default action as well. So uh, throw message will clear this field, it will throw the message and uh, we're ready to go. So uh, just with this, in terms of this key code thing, I'm just going to go through this quickly. I'm going to console.log e.keycode and we can see how this works now. So uh, console.log is basically going to log the key that's pressed to this console here. So when I type A, for example, we've got 65. When I type enter to go down to a new line, we've got 13. You can also see that this has prevented the default action and we haven't gone down to a new line which is important but I'm going to hold the shift key now which is 16 I'm going to hit enter and you can see that that goes down to a new line so we've now got this functionality uh, that allows us to go down to a new line and also then enter prevents the default action so in this case uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this console log the throw message is going to call the throw message function that we're going to create here so chat dot throw message now what we're going to do now is define what we need to send through to this method. Um, so that's going to be the value of the uh, text area. So in this case we can just say this dot val. Okay so the um, throw message um, function here. So chat dot throw message equals function. So in here we are going to First of all, quite important to detect if the length of the message doesn't equal zero because we want to, we don't want to send blank messages basically. Um, but in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, well, yeah, let's go ahead and do this. So we can say uh, trim this message uh, that we pass in here. So we're sending the message through here and then we're saying uh, jQuery has uh, a brilliant built-in trim uh, method. So we're going to say trim message dot length, which is a uh, standard um, JavaScript method, doesn't equal zero. So if it doesn't equal zero, I'm going to alert one. Just to, uh, In fact, let's console log something just so it's not annoying. Console log one. Cool, so when I refresh and I hit enter, nothing happens. If I type Alex and hit enter, we console log one. That would be sending this data 
to this uh, script. I can then say Alex new line, then hit enter. And again, a little twos appeared here because we've got two ones. So everything's working now. We've we've tested it through the console. Uh, and we know that everything's working nicely. So in this case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing exactly as we do here, but we're going to be sending some different data and we'll have a different success callback. So let's just go ahead and copy this and be lazy. Uh, make sure it's all nice and tidy. There we go. So we're sending to ajaxchat.php. We're sending the message, uh, the method, sorry, as throw. We're also then sending this message variable, and that's just going to be message. So the message is the um, variable that we're sending through to the uh, this page, and message is this message we've passed here. Now, when this succeeds, what we want to do is we don't want to do that. We want to say chat.fetch messages. So we refresh the console and then we say chat.entry.val and we set that to nothing. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and test this out. Now it's not going to work actually sending the data, but when I type in Alex and hit enter, you'll see that uh, this is empty now. Now we can also see that when I hit type in Alex and hit enter, it calls another chat file. So enter there calls another chat file. So every time I type something, it refreshes that and sends this data to chat.php. But yet we are, or at the moment, we're not doing anything to actually handle it. So we need to do that now. Relatively straightforward. If the, methods that, the method that's passed through to this is throw, which is in this case, we're passing the method as throw. We also have message, so we need to do another check and is set was true what we need to check is what do we need to check is set that is message cool so we're going to now throw this message into the database but first of all I'm just going to do some uh, not checking but I'm going to say message equals trim dollar underscore post message we should probably be doing this within our um, our overall throw message uh, here but the reason I've done this this end is so I can also check if it's empty now the reason I'm doing this so let me just check uh, let me just do this and then I'll explain so if empty message equals false throw it so um, this file can be accessed um, outside of our JavaScript file. So we don't need to hit our JavaScript file or our JavaScript file doesn't need to run for this file to be accessed. So people can post data to this however they like. Um, this means that they can actually send data without the JavaScript uh, checks taking place and therefore they can basically put empty messages into the database. So we don't want that. So we need, we've done a server side check and we've also done a client side check as well with this trim message length equals zero or doesn't equal zero. So we're now gonna throw it. So we're gonna say chat throw message. So what do we need to throw? Well, we need to do the dollar underscore session user and we want to throw the message in with that. So we are calling the throw message method, which is taking the user ID, the message, and inserting this into the database. So what's gonna happen is this is going to throw the message in. It's then going to refresh the data, clear the entry value, and we should be good to go. So let me just go ahead and say uh, test, lovely. Let's go ahead and refresh the page just to make sure that stays and it does. And you can see that that's added here with the user ID of one. Um, and I'll just maybe do a smiley face or something. Brilliant, it works. So let's go ahead now and just open up our, uh, our other browser and we'll go ahead and test this out. Okay, so I've magically gone ahead and opened another browser. Uh, what we're gonna do now is, well, what I've already done is I've defined user equals two. So what this has done is it's set that session here to two and therefore the user in the database is now um let's just open up our browser again uh the user in the database is now billy because in users we have billy as two so what we can do now is start to send maybe a winky face which will be alex that will then refresh after five seconds so you do get a bit of a delay but on each user's side it won't seem too much to them and then i might maybe i'll just say hello 
So Billy says hello, and this comes through on this side after five seconds. So um, basically, we have finished. We Well, we have finished. We've created a chat application that we can say, uh, ah, no, we haven't finished. Um, Alex, new line, enter. This doesn't appear on a new line. <clears throat> so we have to uh, correct this. Um, what we need to do is we need to change the output of the um, method or the um, uh, chat.php here we need to re well we've returned the, we've returned the rows in here what we need to do with the output of the actual message is we need to use the nl2br function what this will do is it will um, change any new lines any sort of uh, plain new lines to uh, breaks. So let's go ahead and just refresh. And uh, oh, you can see it's already changed there as well. So we've got Alex and new line. And also I was mentioning the script uh, things. If we were to do script and then alert one, perfect. So you can see that in the database here, we've got, if we look at that particular message, we've got uh, all of the HTML entities in place here. Now, if we didn't have that in place, we'd be able to execute uh, JavaScript, um, XSS attacks on uh, this application. So that's a really, really easy um, chat application. Quite a while through the tutorial, but there's a lot of things that, to, you know, to look at and interesting. Uh, but, you know, if you, if this was understandable and if you understood this, it's uh, a really good way to start, you know, fiddling around and doing other things with this uh, application as well. So that's how to create an Ajax chat application in PHP. We've used jQuery, JavaScript, obviously jQuery being a JavaScript library and uh, our MySQL database. And we've also looked at object oriented programming as well.